Well, summertime is over and fall is here and I am about to embark on a task that I do one time a year. Now, with 364 days in between these tasks being completed, I am likely to forget a thing or two, but not if I use my checklist. So stay with me today and I will show you how I use checklist to get things done. Well, hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, uh, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. If you're new to our channel here, thank you for stopping by. And if you're uh, returning, welcome back. We're always happy to see you. Before we get started, go ahead and uh, think about hitting that subscribe button if you'd like to learn more about how I use OneNote and GTD to get things done in my life. And go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like or learn anything new from our video today. It really helps my channel out a lot. Anyway, back to what we are talking about today, something that I find very important, and that is checklists. As I said in the intro, fall is here, and the one thing that I do one time a year is I take my little pool down. <laughs> now we have a small uh, pool in the backyard. It's one of those that you inflate the ring and it, you know, it stays up on its own all year. We have used it for years and years and years, and we absolutely love it. It is the perfect size for our family. Um, but when the end of the year comes and it's time to put it away, we have a checklist that we follow uh, to put it away correctly so that it will be in good shape to use next year. Okay, let's jump into the computer and I will show you that checklist. Okay, so here we have our pool maintenance checklist and you can see that I have all of the pool equipment listed that I do here. Uh, the initial setup of the pool, and I have photos of that setup. This link here will take me to those photos. So you see it's just one of those small backyard pools, but we have pictures so that we have the pump in the right place uh, and the ladder in the right place and all of those kinds of things. The initial setup uh, section of the checklist is listed here. Then I have weekly maintenance items that need to be done here. I also have a daily checklist that I do uh, for the pool. And then this is the part that I need to focus on now. And that is taking down the pool. And you can see here that I have very detailed uh, pieces of information. And that is one of the great things about uh, having a checklist is you can get very granular, very specific in what you need to do. It's very detail oriented to make sure that no small detail is overlooked. One of those small details is that spiders like to live on the outside of the pool and every fall they come and they start building their nest and having their babies. Well, if you don't know this about me, I love spiders. And so one of the things that I do is I go out with sticks and I take each spider web uh, with any spiders that are left in it and I wind it around the sticks and I take them over and put them somewhere in the woods so that they can continue to live on. I know it's a little extreme, <laughs> but that's just the kind of person that I am. This checklist is very helpful for me. Uh, you know, it shows me specific pictures about you know, how to set the pump up, uh, also how to set up the ladder to turn the pool upside down to let it dry out, you know, all of that kind of thing. It's just, it's really great. You see, I have, you know, attached the vacuum minus the mesh bag. So very detail uh, oriented steps that I have here. So I really, really like that. But while I was looking for this checklist in, of course, OneNote, uh, where I store everything. OneNote is my life. Um, while I was looking for this checklist, I happened to run across all of these other checklists. Now you ask me, uh, how did I find that checklist? Well, I simply go up to the search bar up here at the top and I type pool. And you see when I type pool, 
all of the things that I have to do for the pool come up. The maintenance checklist is right there. Okay. But when I started thinking about what other checklists I have, I typed in the word checklist and you can see all of the checklists that come up that have in the title checklist as part of the title. I wanted to show you a few of those here. So as I was saying in the beginning, checklists can be very useful for things that uh, you do in a very infrequent basis, like once or twice a year, or they can also be useful if you're trying to do something very frequently, like building a new habit or setting up routines. So let me show you what that kind of checklist might look like. So when I click on uh, my routines, you see here I have listed an AM routine and a PM routine. Those kinds of checklists really help me establish that routine or that habit. And then if I want to add a new component to that habit, all I have to do is work it into that checklist. My mind is already in the routine of doing those things over and over. And it's much easier to build habits when you link them onto routines that you already do. Okay, let's go back and look at one or two more. Um, where, where's a good place to find checklists? Maybe, maybe you're not somebody who really understands how to create your own checklist. There are lots of checklists out there on the web. This one is one that I happen to find on Pinterest. This is a home maintenance and deep cleaning checklist for the springtime. And you can see that it is very detailed. Talks about interior, exterior, windows and doors, what to do in the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the office, all of those kinds of things. So Pinterest is a great resource or online is a great resource to find other people's checklists to get you started at creating yours. I am also uh, developing a monthly reset checklist for myself where I started writing down really all of the things that I do at the beginning of each month or the beginning of each season. And, you know, just kind of a, a way to go through and create a new monthly routine for myself. Of course, you know, I'm a gtd -er. I'm all about David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. Um, and there's a weekly review checklist that's listed here by David Allen, and he talks about all the things that you need to do. And then I took it and revised it for myself and created my own over here. And again, that's what checklists are great for, being able to modify and use them for the things that uh, fit you the best, okay? If you'd like to see a video on this weekly review, I'll leave a link up above. I went through and talked all about this checklist and how I do my weekly reviews. Actually, it's a very popular video on my channel. Then I have a couple down here for getting organized for the holidays. Now, some people may think it's a little crazy, but October is the time that I start thinking about those holiday preparations. Again, here's a checklist that I found on the web that is about getting organized for the Christmas holidays. Pretty handy. And then here is a checklist from last year that I used uh, for the holidays. It's from my holiday planner. And six weeks out from Christmas, which at this point happened to be November, the middle of November. And these are the things that I wanted to make sure that I got done that week. Five weeks from Christmas, here are the things I wanted to make sure that I got done and so on and so on. And as you can see over here for January 3rd through the 9th, I even carried that into putting things away, logging things, sending thank you notes, listing anything that I need for next year, you know, all of that kind of thing. So from start to finish, uh, trying to break it down into weekly checklists was a great way to help me not feel so stressed about the Christmas holidays. And in thinking about it, I'm going to be doing this again because this worked great for me last year. So checklists can be very helpful for helping you save time and making sure that you're not forgetting anything. Speaking of saving time and not forgetting anything, one of the uh, things that I use the most, which I do not see on here, let me find it for you really quick. Uh, let's see, that would be my packing 
list. I started making packing lists a long time ago. Uh, let's see. Let's do this one when we just did our uh, travel. And you see here, this checklist I have broken down into things that I need, uh, you know, for traveling, maybe things to take on the plane. I list all of my clothing items down here, not only for myself, but for my husband, uh, so that the, the checklist works for both of us. Checklists are very helpful for all of the things that you might consider uh, that you might need for, on a trip, for example. That doesn't mean that you have to take every item that's on your list, but it is something that you might want to consider. For example, you see on my clothing and accessories, beach cover-up, swimsuit, and beach towel have a strike through on them because I knew on that trip I was not going to need those. Do I want to take them off my master packing list? No, because there are lots of places that I go that I do need those things. So what I like to do is simply leave everything on the list and then mark it off if I know that I'm not going to need it. Also, I modify the list when I come back if there's anything that I found that I missed or needed to add to my list. Okay, another great thing about checklists is you can use them to help delegate responsibilities to other people, okay? So one of the things that I always delegate to my husband is the gadgets section. <laughs> um, you know, I kind of take care of the food and the kitchen stuff and he takes care of getting everybody's cell phones and chargers together, um, you know, tablets and that kind of thing. So being able to delegate those items to somebody else, again, takes it off of your mind and allows other people to participate, you know, in the activity of getting ready or doing the job or whatever it might be. So delegation is a good thing. The other thing that checklists are good for is that they are good visual reminders uh, for what needs to be done. Again, here I have you know, a list of things that I do before I leave the house. So make sure the mail is stopped and, uh, you know, checking with the um, cat sitter and, you know, locking the doors and all of those, kind, emptying the coffee pot and all those things that you might not think about on your way out the door. But just having a checklist there in front of you is a good visual reminder. It's very helpful for me. Okay. The other thing I think too is they speed up the process because you're not standing around going, now what do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? You know, there's kind of a, a list of things that need to be done and uh, it helps move you through the process much quickly, okay? I think checklists provide great discipline. Uh, so for example, with the routines about doing the same thing every day, taking your vitamins, getting your exercise, you know, doing the dishes, sweeping the floor, all of those kinds of things, being consistent and being disciplined in those things. Uh, having those checklists are very helpful. Some people like to put those kinds of checklists on their daily pages or their weekly pages. Some people just like to post them on the refrigerator. Some people even do things like clean up their packing list, print out a new one and stick it in their suitcase so that the next time they go on a trip, they'll be ready to go. Talk about being a visual clue and putting things in a great place. I think that's a great idea. When I started thinking more about checklists, I started thinking, you know, well, who uses checklists? You know, why are checklists so important? And the more that I researched, I learned that, you know, there are lots of people who use uh, checklists for all kinds of things. Um, one of the most famous people uh, that I have learned from about using checklists in addition to David Allen, is the surgeon. His book was called The Checklist Manifesto uh, by Dr. Gawande, and he actually uh, went into operating rooms and decided uh, to try using a checklist for, um, you know, the procedures of going through surgery, um, when to check with other teammates, uh, what to do before the patient leaves the operating room and that kind of thing. He found that by having surgeons use checklists in the operating room, that they were able to save lives 50% of the time just based on simple accidents that may have happened or things that might've been overlooked through, uh, you know, the use of not using checklists. Anyway, I just think that's incredible. Um, I will list his book down below and I will also list his TED talk 
which is fascinating uh, to listen to. Now we all know that autopilots use checklists before they take off or every flight that they take, which I think is a great thing to do. Uh, I think race car drivers do the same thing. And uh, you know, there's just lots and lots of instances where uh, checklists can be very helpful. Well, there you go. Today we have talked about how checklists can be used to standardize repetitive tasks that are short-term, like daily routines or weekly routines. They can also be used to uh, help you streamline uh, things that you may do less frequently, like once a month or once a year. And by having a detailed list, you're less likely to overlook an item. And by adding check-ins with other people, communication pauses in your checklist, you can also um, uh, make sure that you're on track. One of the great things that I love about checklist is it's a wonderful way to delegate tasks that might be uh, done by yourself to be able to be done by someone else. I also think that checklists provide a uh, sense of consistency and discipline in tasks that you are trying to do, whether you're doing them yourself or whether you're doing them with a team and you have delegated some of those tasks to someone else. They are great visual reminders that speed up the work that we are doing, uh, eliminate a lot of distractions, and help us get things done. Now, David Allen says that we should all keep our checklist in a reference section, uh, things that we would refer to when the time comes. Some people also like to add them to the areas of focus that they might um, that they might have them under. So for example, I store my travel checklist or my packing checklist under my travel section, uh, which is an area of focus for me, rather than just keeping it under projects or something like that. But one of the beautiful things about using OneNote is it has such a great search feature that all I have to do is go up and type the word packing and you see the packing list comes right up. So. I think that is a wonderful thing. Anyway, I hope that you will start to implement some checklists in your life to make things easier and smoother for you. Maybe you can delegate some of those uh, tasks to other people. Anyway, thanks for joining me today and I hope you've learned something new or gotten some inspiration for a checklist of your own. And here's hoping that you can live a more simplified and organized life through better planning. I use OneNote and checklists. <laughs> okay, until next time. Okay, bye.